Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for a better memory next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Shadow the Hedgehog, the perfect example of what happens when a DM never gets to be a PC and just jams every backstory idea they had into one character. He's an amnesiac, clone, immortal torture victim with roller skates and infinity gems. He's also a rival to Sonic, but with a backstory like that, I think he definitely has the edge. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, you gotta go fast, rolling around at the speed of sound, but like, darker. Next, we need chaos, and the ability to control it. Finally, guns, or at least the fantasy realm equivalent of them. Yes, there are real guns in D&D, but your DM might not want them in their setting. We'll just grab something from the player's handbook that should fit everywhere. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your dexterity and charisma high. Intelligence will be number one. Controlling chaos requires an understanding of chaos. Dexterity next, you've gotta go fast if you're gonna keep up with Sonic. Charisma after that, you're pretty intimidating, or at least as intimidating as a hedgehog can be. Follow that up with constitution shadow is virtually indestructible it should be at least a plus one modifier strength is a bit low we can fix that up with athletics proficiency sorry not everything can be high and we don't really need it for anything we're gonna dump wisdom if shadows on the scene chaos isn't the only thing being controlled Shadow also is, because, you know, he's gullible. And bad guys just have to be like, hey, Amnesiac, you're supposed to punch tails. And he's like, uh, okay, I guess. Shadow's backstory is a little hazy because of that whole amnesia thing, but Simic Hybrid works well for a dude who got pumped full of too much science juice. You get plus two constitution and plus one intelligence because that's what I want, and you can pick whatever you want. 60 feet of dark vision and an animal enhancement. Manta Glide lets you ignore 100 feet when you're falling and move twice as far horizontally as you do vertically, which should stop you from breaking your legs when you cannonball off a skyscraper. Build your own background for athletics and acrobatics because you're too cool for regular backgrounds. Take a shot of water every time I go into the edgy voice. Also, sorcerers can't get those skills, and we're gonna start off as a sorcerer. Sorcerers can learn Arcana and Intimidation, though, which should help you understand the Chaos Emeralds and yell at people until they give you the Chaos Emeralds. Speaking of Chaos, I'm not making Shadow a Shadow Magic Sorcerer or a Shadow Monk, because, and bear with me here, those subclasses don't give you things that Shadow does? He doesn't summon a Ghost Dog like Shadow Magic Sorcerers do, and he doesn't have the Wisdom score you need for a Monk. Feel free to get mad in the comments, though, Chaos feeds the algorithm. Wild magic sorcerers get wild magic surges, meaning your DM can ask you to roll a d20 after you cast a spell of first level or higher. If you roll a one, something chaotic happens. There's a page in the player's handbook, roll a d100. Hopefully, you roll well. The majority of things on that table are good to neutral, but some can fully kill you and your team at level one. Good luck. Speaking of good luck, Tides of Chaos gives you some good luck, giving you advantage on an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw once per long rest, though it resets when you roll on that surge table. Pro tip for a DM for the Wild Magic Sorcerer, a fun homebrew rule doubles the chance of a Wild Magic Surge each time one doesn't happen, courtesy of Dimension 20. Also, go watch Dimension 20. They're not sponsoring the video, I just like them. For your cantrips, Chill Touch is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d8 necrotic damage and prevents the target from healing for the round for a Lash of Chaos. Fire Bolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 fire damage for a little boom. Create Bonfire makes a little AoE of fire that deals 1d8 fire damage to creatures that fail a dexterity save in a 5 foot area cube of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier for an area boom. Also Marshmallows. True Strike is for people who get two free videos a week but get mad at a person who makes them if they charge for an additional product that requires additional labor. Remember, nobody owes you anything, and if somebody's offering a good or a service, it isn't unreasonable to ask for compensation, especially if they still make content for you that they don't charge for. You don't have to join the Patreon if you don't want to, I still appreciate you watching my videos, but don't complain about something existing, and don't complain that I reward people who join, that's how capitalism works. If you don't like that, start a revolution, Comrade Tulak will be with you. For your first level spells, Expedition retreat lets you dash for 10 minutes as a bonus action to go a little bit faster. Maybe not as fast as Sonic because I just realized sorcerers can't learn long strider. I'm sure it won't bother you too much that you're worse than Sonic at something. Chaos Bolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 2d8 plus 1d6 damage of a somewhat chaotic type. Pick one of the numbers you rolled on the d8s, acid, cold, fire, force, lightning, poison, psychic, or thunder in that order. If you roll doubles, it jumps to someone else so you can deal a ton of damage if you're lucky. 
Second level sorcerers get a font of magic, a pool of points you can use to recover spell slots, or you can spend it on other cool things thanks to the class feature variants Unearthed Arcana. Imbuing Touch lets you make a weapon magical in terms of overcoming resistances for a minute. Empowered Reserves gives you advantage on skill checks, and Sorcerer's Fortitude gives you a d4 of temporary HP for every sorcery point you spend. Magical Guns, Random Talents, and Indestructibility, all of those sound like shadow things. So is jumping, because he's in a platformer. So grab the jump spell to triple your jump distance for a minute so you can hop around like a hedgehog. Third level sorcerers get Meta Magic, the original Adventure League legal way to spend your sorcery points on things that aren't recovering spell slots. Extended spell doubles a spell's duration to make you run faster, longer, or jump higher, longer, faster, stronger. Those are lyrics. Shoot. Heightened spell gives a creature disadvantage on a saving throw, which will be more important later, but is useful now if you want to kill Robotnik with the power of camping. For this level spell, Blur gives creatures attacking you disadvantage on hitting you for up to a minute, depending on your concentration. Blue Blur? What about the black and red Blur? So, I guess if it's a Blur, it'd be like Maroon? The Maroon Blur! Fourth level sorcerers get an ability score improvement or a feat. The mobile feat adds 10 to your movement speed. You can ignore difficult terrain when you take the dash action, and creatures you attack with a melee attack can't make opportunities against you until the end of your turn. It won't make you as fast as Sonic, but it does make you faster. I'm sure you only care about being the best version of yourself. To do that even more, enhance ability gives a creature advantage on a type of ability checks of your choice. Strength will also double their carrying capacity, dexterity makes it so they take no falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less, and constitution gives 2d6 temporary hit points. These all last for an hour depending on your concentration, and you can technically give them to someone else, but really it's the best way to get you those anime levels of skills. We do need more Sonic anime. Get on it, Sega. Fifth level sorcerers can learn third level spells. Haste doubles your movement speed, gives you plus two to your AC, advantage on dexterity saves, and an extra action you can use for an attack, dash, disengage, hide, or object using action. It lasts for a minute depending on your concentration. Keep in mind, when it ends, you're gonna have to skip out on actions and reactions for a round, so I highly recommend extending the spell with a sorcery point and re-rolling any saving throws you can with your wild magic abilities. As a Simic hybrid at this level, you also get another animal enhancement. A carapace will give you plus one to your AC while you're not wearing armor for some hedgehog spikes, because you're a completely realistic depiction of a hedgehog. Sixth level wild magic sorcerers can bend luck, letting you spend two sorcery points as a reaction to add or subtract a D for from the attack roll, ability check, or saving throw of a creature you can see, letting you make your enemies worse and making yourself look cooler. For this level spell, slow is the opposite of haste for up to six creatures that fail a wisdom saving throw in a 40-foot cube, having their speed, subtracting two from their AC and dexterity saving throws, preventing them from taking reactions, restricting them to an action or a bonus action on their turn, and if they cast a spell with a casting time of an action, you roll a d20 on an 11 or higher, they can't cast it until next turn. If something stops them from casting it, they're out of luck and out of that spell slot. It lasts for a minute or until you drop concentration or until they make the wisdom saving throw on their turn. This lets you control the chaos that is other people. It would also help you shoot people, but to get even better at shooting people, we gotta dip into fighter. First level fighters can choose a fighting style. Archery lets you add two to your attack rolls with ranged weapons, making sure you hit whoever you're shooting at. You also get second wind, letting you recover 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest in case someone actually manages to hit you once. Second level fighters get action search, letting you make an extra action in the same round once per short rest. With this and haste up, you can go 400 feet in one round, which is just as fast as Sonic. Trust me, don't go watch the Sonic video, it's just as fast. Wait, if you watch the Sonic video, I get more views. Okay, go to the Sonic video, notice that I lied. Comment on it there, then come back and comment on it here. That is some premium algorithm feeding. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype and eldritch knights can bond with a weapon, letting you summon it to you as a bonus action on your turns as long as you're on the same plane. What's more edgy than not bonding with any person? How about only bonding with a gun? You can also learn some wizard spells and get spell slots too. Check page 165 of the player's handbook to figure out how many spells you have at any given level. Most of your spells have to be abjuration and evocation, like shield, which adds five to your AC as a reaction for a round, mage armor, which makes your AC 13 plus your dexterity modifier for it eight hours, or Burning Hands, which forces a dexterity saving throw of eight plus your intelligence modifier on creatures in a 15-foot cube, dealing 3d6 fire damage to those that fail. Get some shadowy defenses and a flamethrower. Those are always fun. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement or a feat. The crossbow expert feat lets you fire a crossbow twice in the same round. You can shoot someone at point blank range without disadvantage and make an attack with a hand crossbow as a bonus action so you can rata 
the Tata. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once with your action, and thanks to that handy dandy crossbow expert feat, you can even do that with a crossbow, that's pretty special. Sixth level fighters get an ability score improvement, and hey, let's take one. We're level 12, we need to actually get some better stats eventually. Dexterity will help you shoot, and it will help your AC, so it's offensive and defensive, kind of like someone with a Sonic character as their profile picture. Seventh level Eldritch Knights get War Magic, letting you make an attack as a bonus action after you cast a cantrip with your action. Chill Touch prevents healing, that's pretty useful. You can also learn second level spells from your Eldritch Knight list. Scorching Ray is pretty good, it shoots three balls of fire that deal 2d6 fire damage each, and you can make those hit one or multiple targets if you need to do some crowd control. Eighth level fighters get another ability score improvement, how about some more dexterity before we grab another feat? I bet you can guess which one, it's the one we always get with Crossbow Expert. It rhymes with Schmarp Schmooter, it's the Carp Looter feat, you get to use it to get all the scales off of carps you kill. Ninth level fighters get Indomitable, letting you reroll one saving throw per long rest in case the chaos gets a little too chaotic. 10th level Eldritch Knights get Eldritch Strike, giving creatures you hit with an attack disadvantage on your spell saves, which could help you make sure that your slow spell works, at least on one person. Maybe one named after an ovular breakfast staple. 11th level fighters get an extra attack for 3 attacks with your action, 6 attacks with an action surge, 7 attacks with the crossbow expert bonus action, and 8 attacks with the extra haste action. If we capped off our modifier that would be even more deadly, but it's already pretty darn good. 12th level fighters get an ability score improvement. Capping off your dexterity modifier will help you get the most out of your guns because you have guns, and I think it's important to remember how ridiculous that is. Like, don't normalize it. Really absorb that you are a genetic abomination rodent with the powers of a god who still just uses a normal gun. I think it's important. 13th level fighters get another use of Indomitable to keep you succeeding those saving throws. You can also learn 3rd level spells from the Eldritch Knight list like Fireball which forces a dexterity save on creatures in a 20 foot radius sphere, dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail for a grenade or a missile or whatever excuse I have to come up with to justify putting Fireball on this list. Our capstone is the 14th level of fighter for an ability score improvement or a feat. The sharpshooter feat isn't actually the carp looter feat, I was lying to you, like everyone who made you. It lets you fire at max range without disadvantage, ignore all but full cover, and take a negative 5 penalty to your attack rolls to add 10 to your damage rolls with a ranged weapon. For how much damage this is, let's go over to the pros. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. With a maximum of 8 attacks per round, you can deal 8d6 plus 120 piercing damage with a hand crossbow and make that all magical thanks to imbuing touch. You're also really hard to hit with mage armor, carapace, haste, and a shield spell, and your dexterity modifier, you can have 26 AC or 21 without the shield spell if you don't want to waste your first level spells on a reaction. Finally, you're very fast with extra speed for mobile and haste to get you out of harm's way when you need to. For weaknesses, you have a lot of concentration spells, so even if you're decent at maintaining concentration, you're going to have to pick and choose. Your spell saves are also pretty low since we mostly invested in guns. Finally, low wisdom means you're regularly going to get bamboozled due to failed insight and frequent spell saves, but this is still one of the strongest builds we've made. Really use that edge to edge out the competition and make sure that the maroon blur makes the blue blur look like the absolute turd he is. Just watch out for someone who might try and take advantage of your power. It can be a pain living in someone else's shadow. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote in polls, and you get character sheets at the $5 tier. That equates to like two cents per sheet by the end of the month. It's a pretty good deal. And sub to Tulak and Mango. That's the last thing I'm going to say. Goodbye.